All right, let's get started. Um, good evening, guys. Uh, welcome to Duke APD Consulting Club Case Practice 101. So I'm Ziping, a second year PhD student in mechanical engineering, and currently I'm serving as the professional development chair at the APD Consulting Club. So um, today we would like to answer two potential questions that may have on top of your mind. First one is, what is case interview? What are what are we going to do for the case interview? And secondly, um, we are going to address one problem, that is, how can I prepare for case interview, let's say, from scratch, and hopefully tonight, right? Um, with that, let's go ahead to the lecture today. So the outline for today is like this. First, we are going to discuss what is case interview, and then uh, we are going through the flows of the case interview. So basically, there are two types. and. Uh, um, then we will have an overview of the lecture series that we are going to offer through this semester. Um, based on that, um, we, will have the, we will introduce the frameworks and we are going to talk a little bit about why we would like to use framework. Um, with the knowledge, we will apply the framework to a sample case and finally, you are going to practice the cases. Okay, first, what is case interview? So the logic here is the clients actually come to consulting firms because they have a business problem to solve. And uh, for us, it is because the client asks consulting company to solve a problem, the consulting company will ask their candidates to have the ability to solve problem. So we are going to be tested the ability to solve business problems from the root. And at best, we can do that systematically, adaptively, fast and accurately, and also in a client-friendly manner. So all four points here are very important. And one discussion here might be, so what if you only have the first three? Actually, a computer can do that. A computer can do a problem systematically. A computer can do that probably faster and more accurate than you do. And they are doing better about the adaptability. Think of the AlphaGo, right? But they cannot do that in a client-friendly manner. So uh, when the series say, hey, Ziping, I think it's different from you guys say, hey, Ziping. You feel different, right? So a client will feel different. It has to be done by a human. So that's why I would like to emphasize on all four points here. And the entire semester, we're going to focus on the four points. Now, we're going to look at um, what are the common flows of interview. So there are basically two types of one-on-one -on -one case interviews. If we take the one on the left-hand side, for example, that will be case interviewer-driven case. First, the interviewer will give you the background of this business case and also ask you some very broad questions regarding this situation at the beginning. And because it is interviewer-driven, so there are already a couple of preset questions for them to ask you. And then the interviewee will be responsible to ask um, some probing questions, like data info um, around the, this situation, and then uh, get some, um, some useful information and uh, draw some conclusion, give this conclusion to your client or um, the interviewer at, the, in, at this point. So the time will be around 30 minutes for the entire case. And because there are um, three to five preset questions, the interviewers will take the time. It, it means that um, for each question, probably um, it will be around five minutes. And if you cannot finish, they will just uh, jump to the next one. So the rhythm is controlled by, in reviewers, uh, by interviewers. And um, in contrast, for interviewee-driven case, they don't have small questions, only those big questions. So you have the control of the time or the rhythm within that um, case interview. Okay, with a rough idea of case interview, let's see what we can offer you for this semester. So today it is case practice 101, and then we are going to use um, two lectures to introduce the two major frameworks. And uh, in the fourth one, we are actually going to uh, tell you some tricks of how to drill down the case and how to build up issue tree. 
and then we're going to have some um, math class, but that's for con consulting math. So it's not very uh, complicated math, but still you have to master them um, before going to the interview. And uh, for the final one, um, we're trying to see how we can give a good conclusion. So why are we choosing those topics? It is because they're important. As I have mentioned, those, those courses are closely tied to the requirement from the consulting firms. And hopefully, by the end of this master, you guys will be qualified consultant. So um, besides the lecture series, there are some other learning materials that I would like to share with you guys. So for beginners, if it's, you just start, get started, um, there are two books and some sample cases. The first book is called Case Interview Secret, uh, written by Victor Chung. And I think it is the Bible for um, case, case interviews. And the second one is called uh, Case in Point. So it is a relatively old book, but a lot of business structures are included in this book. So it's definitely good to read. And uh, the reason why we would like to, you to go to the website of those consulting firms and uh, to go through the sample cases is because uh, actually they are changing their format of interview a little bit a year, uh, from year to year. So you definitely want to keep yourself updated. But if you have some experience with case interview, I would like you to pay more attention to the rest of three. So the look of my shoulder is actually a series of audios. So they are recorded interviews, real interviews from McKinsey. And uh, um, you will learn from others' mistakes, so it's really good. And the rest two are well-structured case books. And you can definitely find them online. Okay, so let's do framework. Um, before before uh, going into the details of framework, I would like to discuss what is a good framework? How does it look like? In my personal view, it should be MISI, which is mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive. What does it mean? It means that um, your framework should cover a whole piece of pie, entirely, but there is no overlap between different segments. For example here, so if you take Duke students as the whole pie here, you cannot, or probably I won't suggest you to divide this entire pie into international students and female students, because there is an overlap in between, and it does not cover the entire space. And of course, you, you will not probably just take Chinese students and uh, um, American students, because there are some Indian friends, you know, people from other countries here. So you are not covering the entire space in that way. A good way, or a suggested way, could be international international student and domestic student. So that will be missy. What? So how does this reflect to your framework? In your framework, if it is missy, it's very easy to drill down, and the structure is very clear. But if it's not missy, it's very hard. The, the structure will be more complicated. And you, you're probably digging a hole for yourself, right? So that will be a good framework. But why are we using framework? It is because it's extremely hard for, for people to come up uh, with a missy structure just instantly. So you have to rem remember something before you go to the interview. And there is a myth here. A lot of people do a framework, like, like a laundry list, or we call that a survey. It's like, um, are you male or female? So what's your annual income? So this kind of, uh, those kind of items go, go into that one by one. We do not recommend people to do that because you are not adaptable. You are not trying to use your flexibility based on the situation you have here. You're you are not client friendly at all. The consulting firm is not going to pay you thousand dollars a day to go through a survey, right? So that's the purpose. So we definitely want you to use framework, but adapt that to a specific case. Okay. So later, now we are going to introduce two different kinds of frameworks, uh, just roughly because we are going to go deeper into that later for later uh, lectures. Um, the first one is called profitability framework, and it is based on a very simple equation here. That is, 
profit equals to revenue minus cost. And uh, you have two branches here, and you can go deeper under each branch. So this helps you to qualitatively understand the business situation. And there is another framework, which is called the business situation framework, which helps you to understand this business qualitatively. So you have customer, product, company, um, competitors, four segments, and there are some typical questions you would like to ask. So I only show a part of that. You will have a full list on the handouts that I just gave you. So you can just take a look at that. And uh, with the knowledge of the frameworks, let's go through a very simple sample case here and see how we can use the framework towards this case. Yeah, but before I give you this specific case, I would like to give you a structure first. Um, so the basic steps to solve a, solve a case will be first, summarize the case and clarify your objectives. Second, make a hypothesis and develop your structure. So you have the structure. Then drill down each topic. So go deeper into different um, branches and then finally summarize the results. Now the case. So this case is about a shoe manufacturer company and you are a consultant working with a shoe uh, manufacturing company. The CEO of that company noticed that there is a decline in their profit this year. He asked us to find the reason behind this declining profit and the suggestions to improve the profit. So step one, summarize the case and clarify the objectives. So what I would do is, okay, so now um, we are working for a shoe manufacturer company and uh, the CEO would like to know uh, what's the reason behind the declining profit and maybe some suggestions to improve the profit. profit. So do I understand this correctly? This last sentence is especially important because you are trying to ask questions to the interviewer whether you get everything correct all the data, all the question. And then you can construct your structure here. So this is a typical profitability framework because we, um, because we are asked the profit, about the profitability, so we would like to go with this first. You can see here I make this kind of loop because we are going to do iterations here. You will see that later on. So according to the equation that uh, I just showed, showed you guys, Profit equals to revenue minus cost. So if profit is down, it means that it's either uh, revenue is up or the cost. Uh, it's either either the revenue is down or the cost is up. So um, we can ask um, the interviewers some probing probing questions, and you will find um, this is how the situation goes. So if you ask, okay, now um, I see that uh, we have a declining profit. My hypothesis at this moment is. Um, we may have a revenue problem. So it, it, my hypothesis is our revenue is declining. Is that right? So the um, interviewer will say, no, it's actually, we have a flat revenue. Okay, and this, at this moment you will say, okay, that's good. I'm going to modify my hypothesis, hypothesis here. So because the revenue is flat, it means that the cost goes up. So do I have uh, any extra data on that? So. It will be the cost uh, is consists of cost per unit and times the unit sold. And you will just go deeper like that, refine your hypothesis step by step like this, like a loop. And finally, you will find it is because of the variable cost that has changed during this year. And if you just go one more step deeper, you will see that the variable cost actually is consists of four parts, raw material, labor, utility, shipping. It's, it's definitely very common for a shoe manufacturing company. And you notice that, okay, so it's because of the labor is going up that cost the entire cost goes up and profit goes down. And this is a point you're going to shift from your profitability framework to the business situation framework. And you are going to ask qualitative questions around the four parts. Because we are having a, um, an issue with the labor, um, so it's less likely to be in the first two parts, customer products part. 
So we are going to ask questions within company and competitors here. And there are four, three parts, three uh, points actually stand out. Cost structure, industry behavior, and competitors' behavior. So those three points are relevant. And if you just go a little bit deeper, you will see that, okay, by asking for more data, you see that the cost structure for the labor cost is actually 30% of the entire cost. It's pretty high. And uh, for the, in the industry, the labor cost has decreased industry-wide. So it's not a company-specific problem. It, uh, it is an industry-wide problem. And what are our competitors doing? They actually have, uh, the, have some layout. They lay off. They are cutting people. OK, so what's the real reason behind that? And you can still ask questions. And you will see the, the, the problem is uh, the nation is actually increasing the minimum wage. So you have to pay more to your labor, and uh, uh, it's requested. That is why you are paying more to your labor and cost more to the entire company. Aha, so this is the root cost. After finding the root cost, you are going to find some um, potential ways to solve this problem. The first way is to um, change the cost structure. You remember that piece point? One possible way is to uh, optimize the manufacturing process and again lay off some domestic labors and also try to go outside of the country to do outsourcing. So you are trying to move factory overseas. So the restriction is not a problem anymore. So all three points will contribute to your potential solution. And next one, we are going to summarize the entire case. That so based on our analysis of this case, we think uh, the main reason for the declining profitability is the increasing labor cost due to the increasing of the minimum wage in the US. And our suggestion to improve the profitability are one, two, three here, I just mentioned. So that's the final step. That will conclude this case. So do you guys have any questions so far? regarding, let's say, structure, terminology, anything here? OK, good. So um, finally, it's your turn to practice. And uh, for th at this moment, I would like you guys to pair up, you know, one by one, also one on one. And uh, um, for each case, we prepared some case here. And for each case, it's, it typically takes around 30 minutes for you to finish it, but can be extended if it's the first time for you to practice. And uh, I hope you guys can track down each other's performance during the practice, um, especially about the part where they got stuck, so where they got problem. And take that down on the form, on the evaluation form, um, that within the handouts. And uh, just to summarize that in a sentence or two, that would be good. If you have not yet subscribed our uh, weekly newsletter, the link is right over here. So with that, I hope you guys have a good practice tonight. Thank you.